Welcome to our digital worship for the second Sunday in Christmas. As we gather together to celebrate this season of Christmas, I ask you to join with me in a brief order of confession and forgiveness. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled the earth with light, the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, 
Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people. Save the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return there. With weeping they shall come, and with consolation I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a water garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them. I will give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 147. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? God sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob statutes, and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Alleluia. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him things in heaven and things on earth in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will so that we who were first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward the redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Light shines in the darkness, 
The darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. Is God the only Son? who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your presence in our life, your presence in our world. Thank you for coming down to be among us. Thank you for continuing to open our eyes to who you are and who we are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So what is God like? I know that our words fall short here. I know that all descriptions that we may come up with, you know, they're never adequate. I think there's a reason that the Bible uses so much poetry and parable and story to try to capture at least a portion of what God is like. Why we have a, a book that is so long and so full of so many different things trying to describe God and the relationship between God and God's people and ultimately the relationship between God and us. And there have been lots of attempts throughout the world trying to talk about what God is. In some respects, people have taken the world itself and said, well, you know, the world is this great and wonderful thing. That must be God. Or they would look at, you know, the, inc the incredible variety of of creatures that lived in the, the air or on the land or in the seas, and they may say, you know, the whale is strong and it's massive. It must be like God. Or the eagle must be like God. Or the lion or any number of other things. Or, you know, there was certainly a, a, a tendency as the nations began to accumulate power for themselves that the gods began to look more and more like the ideal depiction of what predominantly men and occasionally women were supposed to look like. You know, they were these, these big, strong, masculine. They were everything that, everything that we viewed ourselves being only bigger, only stronger. And then in the, in the, as a church began to evolve, one of the other things that began to evolve alongside it was this idea of, you know, God in kind of this hierarchical system. You know, that we would take the images of the way in which we've structured things here on earth and, and put those on God. And so God was, you know, over these hosts of angels and these hierarchies of, you know, archangels and seraphs and all these other things down all the way down to us. And one of the gifts that I think our tradition under Luther tried to point us back to was that we have a very specific answer to that question of what is God like? And we come to know that in Christ. Christ is, as Lutherans, Christ is primarily where we come to know about God. What is God like? That's why we tell these stories over and over and over again, because we trust that in Jesus we are encountering God. A God who comes down to be among us. A God who comes not to, to separate us and, and to be high over us or to be unapproachable, but comes to us in the most approachable of ways. As a child in a manger, and yet at the same time, is the word and the light and the life that's there at the beginning of creation that somehow in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and that what comes into being in him is light and life and that somehow these two things are the same that this child is the light of the world. And that God comes down to be in our midst. That into the ordinary things, God comes down. You know, that's so much of what our worship is. Is God meeting us in ordinary things? In spoken word, in water, in bread, in wine. You know, there is perhaps a little bit of, a, of magical thinking in the midst of this, but I think that that's also a part of this reality that we, where do we encounter God? Well, it's where, it's where that which we can't understand comes to be a part of that which we know so normally. No one, as John can say, no one has seen God. 
but it's the Son who makes God known to us. And that's why we come together again and again and again to tell the story of Jesus so that we may know what God is like. And as we are called to follow him, we might learn who we are as followers of Christ, as followers of the God who comes down to be among us. You know, there's a, there's a, old, a, a song that I learned uh, years and years ago that talks about he came down that we, he may, we may have life. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have hope. You know, and I think that that direction is right. He came down. God came down to us so that we may have all these things. And we might know at least in some part what God is like as we try to follow God. And I think that we continue to learn more and more. Not in, you know, not in all those times where we try to cast God in our image. But in learning to follow behind him and learning how God acts towards our brothers and sisters in need. Learning how God heals or forgives and ultimately learning how God loves even when that love is rejected. So what is God like? Well, ultimately, for us, our answer is, well, let me tell you a story about Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for the world. Give wisdom to the leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all co countries on your cornerstone of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Hayden, Lindsay, Luke, Michael, Sid Spencer, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We lift up before you Aaron, Aubrey, Austin, Becca, Betsy, Bob D., Bob S., Brenda, Brett, Krista, Craig, Dan, Dave, Deanne, Denny, Dorothy, Doug, Eliza, Elizabeth, Francis, Gary, Jamie, Jan, Jerry K., Jerry N., Jonathan, Marie, Matt, Maureen, Michelle, Mike, Patrick, Pete, Roger, Scott, Shay, Sharon, Steve, Susan, Tom, and Vim. And those we pray for in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA in the northern Texas, northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Dallas, Walnut Hill Lutheran Church in Dallas, and the Fund for Leaders and Missions. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Now in trust and in hope we commend to you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. May God's peace be with you as you gather together with friends and families at home. This is also the part of the service where we would collect our offering. Again, I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness as we've gone through the last couple of years and your, your continued generosity, your, your support of Rejoice and its mission here in, in the Frisco McKinney area. We've been able to do what we've been able, what we needed to do because of you. Again, you can always support Rejoice either through the, uh, the, the Give Now button on the website, the Tithely app, or through sending a check to our physical address at 12,000 Independence Parkway, Frisco, Texas, 75035. And again, thank you for your continued uh, faithfulness as we've gone through this. At this point, we will prepare for communion. Uh, communion is a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's a place where we trust that Christ meets us. And so we gather together. And we remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, how our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he given thanks, gave for all the drinks, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your death and resurrection. May these gifts of your body and blood create in us the fruits of your redemption and grace in our lives. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace.
As God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ with these marks of disciple life, praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.